heard the song this day. Maybe they're not, but the thing's moving. And we're not moving it. I don't know. Huh. But I don't hear anything, do you? No, that's what I'm trying to. I mean, I, I realize it probably hasn't started, but I figured as soon as we figure out it isn't going to work, you know, I'm going to have to get on the phone and. Does it look like it is? How's it going, guys? Is that Ty? Is that right here? Well, thanks. That worked. I can't believe it. I think they're going to get ready. Huh. Well, thank you. Yep. How did you do that? You... I copied um, the... Link that was in the oh, and then you put it up there. And I went to the Google Chrome and put it up there. Mm-hmm. I think they're getting ready. Mm-hmm. Your name, yeah, I see name. that. Just don't see the rest of it doing it itself. <laughs> I think, like, that box in the corner is probably in the very bottom left. Oh, here? Yeah, I think if you switch that, you could probably um, ask what. Oh, really? No, I'm not 100% positive. Mm-hmm. I think that's what it's going on. Huh. I heard some talking, didn't you? And, I mean, I think they're just getting started. I don't. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, huh. amazing. If our internet is fast enough, I would go for the Two years, I think, since I've been to Lower Valley. Oh, I got this gigantic. <laughs> I don't know if we have a microphone or not set up in our computer. Okay. Yeah, I scan them and send them. Oh, She probably isn't as loud as I am, but just a test. <laughs> well, I just wanted to make sure you guys could hear me. I see that there's uh, Sarah's on there as well. She's down the hall. <laughs> okay. And Sam was this one, right? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So do we have anybody else other than Cindy coming in? Phone? That's all I see that's on there. Oh, on, online? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe Cindy, can you hear me okay? Yes. Mm-hmm. I just want to know. Right up next to me, but. It's being recorded, so I can we'll send it out. So make it available for me. Well, you can take off all this chit chat beforehand before you publish it. <laughs> Oh, 
if you're separating and retiring and wondering, gosh, I sure loved having flexible spending when I worked, but now you can have it because that's not usually a retirement benefit. But again, this is kind of like a flex plan with Superman, Kate, because you get to pay any premium, including Medicare B. You don't have to keep the state plan. You can go shopping for something else and still take it out of here, okay? So there's a lot of things for which you can pull money out. And we'll talk, this, talk through this quite a bit. The next two or three pages are Q&A. And after the 15 years that it's been that I've been doing Viva, I can tell you that this is what my phone rings on after a presentation or when you as a group start pondering some things and say, now what did she say about whatever it was? So this is the page, set of pages that makes you look real smart with your coworkers or a spouse because you're going to become the Viva know-it-all just because you've got all the Q&A right here. Okay? So hopefully that's helpful. And then the very last page, if you want to just fold it open to that, we're going to come back to that page uh, during the presentation here in just a minute. So just leave it hanging there and we'll come back. All right, so the history piece of Viva is this. Uh, Viva, like I said, was put together a long time ago for all public entities. Just like us, cities, counties, all those other entities get help with their health insurance while they're working. You and I get what we call state share. Every month or every paycheck when we look at it, we see that we get money towards our health insurance. They do too. The, end, the thought was back in, gosh, 17 years ago, year 2000, what can we do to help people when they retire pay for health insurance? Because that state share or whatever other public entities call it goes away. And you have to pay for your health insurance out of your pocket. 15, 18 years ago, two people under the age of 65 cost about 350 bucks a month. You fast forward to now and we're looking at 1100 pushing 1200 bucks a month. So it's still the same principle. What do you, how are you going to pay for health insurance when you retire? Viva's still here. We rolled it out in the fall of 03. Uh, we changed it slightly in the spring of 07 by adding annual leave to it. When Viva first started, it was just the 25% sick leave that could go in there. Then in the spring of 07, we added the opportunity to drop your annual leave in there as well. But it goes in at the rate of 100%. So annual leave's either in or it's out, but your group decides that. And we're going to talk a ton more about that. I just want to plant that seed, if you will. All right, so what is this thing? What is the Montana Viva HRA? First bullet on the slide describes it perfectly. It's a 100% tax <coughs> savings account. Bottom line, that's what it is. But it's funded with tax-free employer dollars, not dollars out of your pocket. So it's not something you can slip 100 bucks a month in and call it yours. Instead, it's funded with either the 25% sick leave balance or the sick and the 100% annual or vacation leave balance. That's what goes into Viva. Now, VIVA stands for Voluntary Employee Benefit <coughs> Association, and I did not get to name this child, okay? I wish, but I didn't. That's the IRS's term for a tax shelter, if you will, for using money on medical expenses. The way that the state set it up was to be a health reimbursement account, which is the HRA piece of VIVA. So that alphabet soup comes to tell you that you've got a tax-free medical savings account, and the HRA part tells you it's funded because of you your job here at the state earning sick and annual leave. Sick and annual leave drops in there in a one-time drop. You spend it, it's gone, Viva's over. Okay, so again, it's not something where when you retire you think, look, I'm going to shuffle 100 bucks a month into that. You can't, okay? It's just the sick or the sick and annual leave that goes in there. All right, so this is the first of a few slides where I talk about what's a group. And my understanding today is that here at Livestock we're just gathering information, and so this group conversation Sometimes it's short when I've got a table full of people that already know what their group is. Today I'm going to make it a little bit longer because you guys are kind of trying to sort out what is a group for me, what, what might work. We've got about 200 groups here at the state of Montana. They range everything from small little bureaus of accounting staff at MDT all the way up to full agencies, okay, and everything in between. I've got tons and tons of different mixes of groups. The IRS gives me some criteria that I have to follow that when Sheila comes to me and says, hey, somebody at Livestock wants a group, she knows the very first thing I'm going to ask her for is an org chart, okay? And she doesn't even roll her eyes anymore. She just knows that <laughs> that question is coming, okay? So this is the rule that I have to follow. So we look at like employer groups. We can't just run around. Individual choice is not an option. We can't just run around and pick people that want to be in Viva. I wish, but we can't. So we start with this org chart type thought. And it can literally be two different ways. That's the second bullet. It can be any separation, or it can just be those of you that are retirement eligible. Okay, so we can look at it both ways. The thing is, there's got to be five of you. 
And so sometimes, like yesterday I was over at DEQ, and there's a gentleman getting ready to retire, and he happens to be the bureau chief at his particular little bureau, and he only has two people that are also eligible to retire. So his group is going to be his whole bureau. Everybody that works for him came to the meeting dutifully. He didn't even buy donuts or cookies, but anyway, they came. And we talked about VIVA, and their group will probably be in any separation group, meaning you're 18, 28, 38, no matter what your age is and no matter how long you've worked at the state, you're in the group. I would say that about 85% of the groups are set up to be retirement eligible because they do, in fact, have the minimum of five people eligible to retire. And in this diagram, if you were to picture this is your bureau that you happen to work in, these blue people are the eligible to retire from PERS systems. They're the only ones that would vote, okay? And that little subset of that org chart would be the group. So that's the difference between any separation, everybody in the picture, and retirement eligible, just the little blue people being in the group. Okay, so we can do it either way. It's a little more um, flexible when you do just the retirement eligible because the younger people in the group aren't downing the vote just because they don't want it, you know. But a little bit of education helps you understand that you're just voting for your buddy to get retired, then you can later do it all. We'll, we'll talk about that. So I plant that seed. Remember that little picture because I'm going to drag you back to it here in a few slides. All right. So why the daylights do we want to do VIVA, okay, other than have a tax-free bucket of money to pay for things? It, uh, the first bullet, avoids taxes 100%. That comes in three pictures. Your annual or sick and annual go in there tax-free. Department of Livestock, when they pay you out, they don't pay taxes on it, so it's a win-win for employer and employee. And then when you start spending it, there's no taxes there either. So this money doesn't ever see any sort of tax, all right? So it gives you that supplemental fund, that first sheet of the handout there after the top sheet, to help you start paying for insurance, all right? And so pre-65 folks, in other words, if you're under 65 and you take the state of Montana coverage when you retire, you're looking at a bill of about 20 grand a year, okay? It's about $1,200 for two of you on medical, dental, and vision. So it's spending. It's a significant chunk of change. When you hit retirement age on the state plan, it drops by half. So it's still about seven-ish, $800 a month for two of you, okay? Now that's not a single premium. However, you can not, you can choose to not take the state of Montana plan and still have your VEBA pay for it. So if you're under 65 and go out on the marketplace and go to Pacific Source or Blue Cross Blue Shield or whoever and buy yourself a plan, you can pay for it out of your VEBA. Okay, so that's definitely an option. If you're over 65 and you want to go, you're going to have to pick up Medicare B, Part B is in boy. You can be reimbursed for Part B. It's 118 to 19, something a, a month. And then you can pick up a supplement that wraps around and picks up everything else. That also is also paid for out of VIVA, including a Part D for drugs. But again, you can stay on the state plan or you can go off. So you kind of have to make that choice in your head. But VIVA doesn't care. They will reimburse you. You have to pay for your coverage, and then you're reimbursed. And you can just set it up so that whoever your bill is going to, whether it's the state or Blue Cross Blue Shield, you can just set it up so that you're paying and VIVA's reimbursing you about the same time. So it's like you won't even see the, see the dip in your savings, if you will. Now, the bottom one there, the IRS requires group participation. Again, that's why we have to talk to us about how are we going to set up our groups to participate. The IRS is going to give us this tax-free bucket of money. It's going to come with a couple of rules, and a couple of the rules are we can't have individual choice, and we can't have groups set up to be highly compensated employees only. So we like a cross-section of every, every wage earning ability there, okay? Okay, so this may be persons around the table. You've chosen the date. You're so jacked, okay? You've got, you've got a plan. But then you start thinking about, how am I going to do all this, okay? There's going to be Social Security at some point. There's going to be a PERS check. Maybe you're lucky enough to have other savings that you've stocked away for retirement. You've got deferred comp or some other sort of 457, 403B plan. Maybe you have an individual health savings account at your bank that you've been sho shoveling money into for expenses. You can do that. And you might have the VEBA on your plate as a discussion item as well. So I always encourage people with all the education I've done with uh, Armando from PERS, I don't know if you guys know him, 
he and I both educate all kinds of public entity employees. So we go to Missoula County, we see the firefighters in Billings. I mean, we, and one of the things that comes back to me when he speaks is how underplanned this event is. How people walk into it, they choose the date, fist pump in the air, and then they start panicking because they haven't made a good plan. So again, BEBA is just part of the plan, if you will. It's intended to be something that helps you on the medical side of things. Okay, getting money in there. We've talked about this a little bit. My piggy bank slide almost needs to be a little sooner in the presentation, but I leave him here because it's up to you guys to decide. Okay, as a group though, you can't have individually different options within the group. Sick leave has to be in there. Sick leave is the basis contribution to the group. As a group, you decide whether or not you want to throw in the annual leave as well. And again, the annual leave is in at 100%. Now, you will see from Sheila a ballot that shows you 10 different options, and you're going to think, she said it was either sick leave or sick and annual. But here's the thing. Back in 2007, remember on my history slide, I told you that we added the opportunity to put annual leave in? That legislative session, we also took that 25% sick leave and fussed with it a little bit because... People were saying, all right, all right, I know money has to go into Viva, but I want some tax cash. I know it's going to be taxed, but I want some. So we divided that sick leave out to be 5% tax cash, 20% in Viva, you know, all the way up to 20% tax cash and 5% Viva. And then we tapped annual leave either on or off those five choices, and all of a sudden there was 10 choices. And do you know what the top two, uh, 200 groups at the state, and 198 of them have either sick leave or sick and annual leave, okay? So you'll see those options on your ballot, but typically most people either lean to one or the other. So I just throw that out so there's no confusion when you see your ballot. All right, speaking of ballots, no individual choice, okay? So let's say that in your particular brands bureau or wherever it is that you work, you guys decide, okay, I want to be one. And you go to Sheila and you say, we've talked and we want sick leave on our ballot. Okay, she sends you out however many people are eligible, let's say 10. She sends out 10 ballots to you and she gets six back. Six people mark a box, okay? She gets four yeses and two noes. Four yeses carry it for all 10 of you for one year, okay? The two people that voted no and the four people that didn't vote don't get to opt out and say, uh-uh. It's no individual choice, majority rules, okay, for one year, one year, okay? And then you can look at it again. So you're voting for the bus driver of the retirement bus that year, okay? And I always joke about saying bring good donuts and coffee to the meeting, but seriously, you're kind of trying to work together to, to make it work for everybody. And we're going to talk more about that example here in just a second. All right, so back to what does it cover. We've already talked about the second bullet, out-of-pocket costs for medical, dental, prescription, vision, over-the-counter, all that flexi type stuff. Your benefit premium payments, including medical, dental, vision, long-term care, Medicare B and D for drugs if it applies to you because if you jump off the state plan, you've got to get something with prescription and medical. But the who of it is kind of interesting because the IRS lets you cover you, spouse, and tax qualified dependents of yours even if they're not on your health plan. Okay, so I've got a tax qualified dependent. It's his last year, dang it. But he does have his own medical plan. He lives in Spokane and he has some expenses. And if I had a Viva, I don't, but if I did, he could, I could take money out of my Viva for him even though he's on another medical plan, okay? But the other thing that sometimes happens is you're the first lucky dog retiring in your household, the spouse is still working, and you have your own thing, you decide to stay with the state, yeah, it's a good thing, I'm just going to take that coverage. And spouse is still working and has a health, a separate health plan that might be covering your last kid at home or whatever. Even though those are two separate health plans, if they had expense, you could take it out of your Viva. Okay, but typically we're all on the same health plan. I just throw out those other examples because there's always that other example in the room. Now the last bullet on the slide is super important because I go over this every time and it never fails. I get a call and it's, but you said, it's like, no I didn't. Working spouse coverage. If you're retiring first in my example a minute ago and you jump onto the working spouse's plan, whether it's a state employee, St. Pete's Hospital, Northwestern Energy, I don't care. A working spouse working and you jump on that plan, you can. There's no rules about that. You can. You just can't use your VBA to pay for what it costs to add you to that plan 
because that's tax-free bucket of money on a working spouse's pre-tax plan in the IRS and so on. But if you do that, you can use your VIVA money for out-of-pocket deductibles, co-insurance, you know, vision, dental, crowns, prescriptions. You can use it like a flex plan right next to your spouse's plan, even if they have a flex plan. That's allowed. The only thing that gets just a teensy bit hanky is if they have a health savings account offered on their plan and you jump onto a plan that has a health savings account. You won't lose your VIVA money at all. It's just that there's some kind of a two-step, I guess a waltz isn't a two-step, but there's a two-step dance between using the HSA money first and then using the VIVA money, but you can do it. It's just, you have a couple of forms to fill out, but you can get her done. All right, so this is kind of the adoption process we go through. Like it or don't, you're in that top box. We are educating, okay? I would assume that if we move forward that your individual bureaus or divisions or whatever, I may come to your staff meeting and do it a little more. Maybe not. Maybe this will be enough and you'll be able to fly forward. But typically what happens next is there's a conversation had and a group vote kind of starts to gel and, and Sheila comes to me and says, okay, it looks like you know X group wants to move forward. They would move forward with a vote from Sheila and you would vote and the results would be tallied and you'd know it. And then you just keep working, okay? The only thing that happens after a group vote is you get a little indicator in your saber spouse that if Mary leaves, her, her money is going to go into VIVA. Voting for and accepting VIVA does nothing. It does not affect how you earn or use your leave balances. You still get X number of hours per month. You still use X hours per month. Voting for VIVA doesn't change that at all. That's exactly the same. What voting for VIVA does is affects what happens with that leave when you march out the door, okay? Instead of being taxed in your last check, it will be sent to our administrator and put in this fund for you to start using. Okay, is that clear? Some people think, oh, I voted for VIVA, now it's going to cost me all this money. But nothing's happening. Only thing that happens is it tells the payroll system what to do with your money when you leave, okay? Important note there. So when you leave, so I've picked on Mary. I don't know if there's a Mary in the room, but pretend there's a Mary. And Mary retires from livestock. She's going to fill out this enrollment form. And she's going to turn it into Sheila, and Sheila's going to get it to me. We're going to process payroll. And the week you leave, that contribution will go to Spokane, along with your enrollment form, and sort of poof, you've got a fund. Okay? And you get to start drawing on that right away. So this kind of, the reason I put a little space in the box of the drawing is, is because there is a space. You vote for it, and then you just hang out and have it in your file, but you don't really have any money to spend. You don't have anything going on until you actually leave and walk out the door. Okay? All right, so key benefits for you. Obviously, tax-free is a good thing. And I'm going to show you some pencil and paper examples here to kind of drive that home. You can use your account any time after becoming claims eligible. What's that mean? Okay? My mythical example of Livestock Mary walks out the door. And just for fun, on her first day of retirement, she has a couple of root canals, okay? Those are eligible expenses. It's her first day of separation. She can do whatever she wants to on her first day, but oh well, there was a dental appointment. Okay, those are eligible expenses. If that dental work had been done the month before she retired, that would have processed through Delta Dental, paid on the benefits. There's no VIVA, right? But when she leaves and then has something happen, then she can start drawing on her account. The money's not literally there the first day she's there, but by the time that she's paying for it and wanting the money to be reimbursed, it'll be there for her, okay? Next thing I like to point out is there's an investment piece of this, and that's why I asked you to leave this open. We're going to come to this in two slides and talk about what your choices are where the money can go, but it's just yours, not your coworkers. Sheila doesn't care what you do with your money. I certainly don't care. It's your decisions on how you want to invest that. Then the last two things I want to bring up are that there's a – there's no use it or lose it time frame on this. So say you retire in July and a spouse isn't retiring until December and you've kind of got six months there where you're no really need for it. Maybe you've got other coverage, maybe, you know, whatever. No time limit on this money. You get to decide when you want to start drawing it. Most people jump in pretty quickly because they're facing a $600, $800, $900 a month insurance payment and ah, where's that going to come from? Okay. Most people spend through it pretty quickly though. And lastly, spouse and dependents are covered even if something happens to you. And again, in two slides, I'm going to walk you through that. Okay, here's the investment conversation. 
When you go through and you fill out your enrollment form down here towards the bottom, there are a list of ten different funds. On the back of the enrollment form are the performance of those funds over X time frame. I would suggest that it's tax season. You guys might have an accountant. You might have a financial advisor. Run it past them. Give some input on this. If you do nothing when you fill this out, it will default to the first one on the list, which is the SEI Daily Income Fund, because that's a money market account. It doesn't go negative. But it might only make two bucks a year. Okay? It's not a super highly performing fund, but it never goes below zero. So if you're a play it safe sort of gal, you want to stick it in there, put it there. Okay? But if you want to switch these up and put 10% in each one and then whatever you want to do, you can do it once a month. Maybe you change it up to 50-50 for a couple of months and then you go back to whatever you want to do. You can change once a month. So just know that. And that's all professionally managed by Washington Trust Bank over in Spokane. The state doesn't have their hands in that. Okay, so that's the investment conversation. You guys can figure that out. In the excitement of retirement, it may just default to the SEI fund, and then maybe a couple of months after you get into a groove and you have time to pay attention to this stuff, you can move it around however you want. Okay? All right, death benefit. Not a happy topic, but a needed topic. If, for example, you happen to pass away as an employee that day, however it happens, there's no viva, right? You haven't filled out an enrollment form. We haven't transferred any money. If you pass away as an employee that's voted for VEBA, the only thing that will happen is that your money will do the same thing it would have done had you not voted for VEBA. Because remember that VEBA vote is just affecting what happens when you walk out the door. So if you're walking out the door happens to be, you know, sailing through the clouds, that's a different thing. That's a whole different thing. And you will get paid out, or your family will get paid out, however they get paid out today without a VEBA. But if something would have happened to you five, six, seven years down the road after retirement, and there was even money in there still, because as you can sort of start to put together, this is pretty fast to spend money, and you start out with a $5,000 account and you hit it 500 bucks a month, you know, it's going to be gone pretty quickly. But if by chance there's something left in there and you pass away, your surviving spouse and dependents can use it for their health care costs, their health insurance, pay any bills that you left behind medically anyway. Not any other bills, just medical bills, okay? But if by chance you don't have a spouse or dependents, the money, if there was any in there, would revert back to the plan. But I, oh, when I say that bullet, I have said it 15 years going strong. I went back to Rain and Associates last year and asked Jared to run me an account uh, report of all the times that had happened. It's 0.02% of the time. People spend the money. Okay, it's gone. And the fact that, yes, we're all going to die. I get that. But usually you've got somebody to leave it to or it's already gone. So sometimes there's a little bit of angst about a single person in the group going, oh, they're going to get my money back. Probably not. <laughs> Probably going to spend it out. Okay? Okay, on the front of the handout, first column down at the bottom is a little example. I promised you an example to pencil out this thing. I get that not everybody's going to separate and retire from the state of Montana with a $10,000 payout. I just picked a number because I don't know what it's going to be. But this is assuming kind of a lifer. You've been around here for a while. You've got a decent amount of leave in your, box, in your bank. And if you weren't in Viva, it's taxed over there. And you're going to see a 27% federal income tax. That's high. That's because that leave is taxed at a higher rate than your income. It's a leave balance. I can't remember the name of what that's called, but it's taxed higher, okay? So you lose a lot. You get the, the, the value of a benefit in the sense that there's about $5,800 in your check that you weren't ex not expecting, but you were hoping for with your leave. But if the same tone, if you're going to go on VEBA, you get the whole 10000 bucks. you know? Now, again, I get that there's $2,000 VEBAs. I get that there's $62,000 VEBAs. They happen both ends, okay? But on the same note, on this example, that's kind of just a difference between the cash and the VEBA. For this person, two people under the age of 65, that's about four months of health insurance that they just get to buy. So again, <coughs> remember the, the picture of the guy with the fist pump all excited about retirement? This is another calculation that you might want to think through. Kind of plan out, gosh, what's my leave going to be? What's my hourly salary? Take your leave balance times your hourly salary divided by four for sick leave. But then on the annual leave, it's your hourly salary times your balance. That's what it's going to be. And then you can pretty much knock out 33%-ish 
and kind of do some math there. So again, we're going to have a conversation about what does this do to my highest average calculation at PERS as well. More homework, okay? I, I come bringing you work. All right, so there's a fee to VEBA, but it doesn't happen the minute we vote. It happens when Mary from Livestock walks out the door. At the end of Mary's first month of retirement, they're going to look at her $10,000 balance, because I'm just pretending she's my example in the last two slides. They're going to look at her $10,000 and take 1.5% divided by 12, because they annualize it. And at the end of the first month, she's going to lose $12.50 on a $10,000 account. Okay? So again, here's a place for you to do the math. You got a $60,000 account, multiply that by six. You got a you know, $5,000 account, cut it in half. That is the amount that they will take out. So if Mary didn't touch her $10,000 VIVA for a whole year, she'd lose $168 in fees versus $4,200 in taxes, okay? This is the reason we gave you investment accounts is to just chip away at that little fee if you want to. You don't have to. The SEI daily income fund over a year on 168 bucks might knock off eight total dollars. I mean, it's not gonna be huge. But depending on how you invest and earn and whatever, that can be what you do with your fee. But it's a pretty peasly little fee when you think about it, okay? So that's there and I want to sh show you. <coughs> Is that fee pretty much locked in by law and not subject to big okay. fluctuations over time? It is locked in. When we started the VIVA, it was 1.75% in a $5 a month administration fee. We've got enough people in VIVA now that we don't need to charge extra, so we actually brought it down. And we're looking at bringing it down again because we've finally crested the point where after the, all this time, the loans that we had to take out to put VIVA in and the administrative fees we pay Washington Trust Bank and Rain and all that, have finally gotten to a point where we could actually, if anything, bring it down. That's kind of where the whole fee structure stands. Um, right now, we're kind of sitting around waiting, just like on our health plan. We got so good at Obama, Obamacare and affordable health care and all that stuff, and now it's going to change. <laughs> so we're kind of sitting around waiting to see what that's going to be, but whatever those changes are won't necessarily impact the but It's a completely different set of tax laws. All right, so then I also get that question sometimes, how long is my VIVA going to last? And I have to come back to you and say, I don't know. Because I don't know what you're going to start with, I don't know what you're spending it on, and I don't know how you're investing. But if you think about my $10,000 VIVA, $1,000 of health insurance every month, I mean, less than a year, that one's gone. Okay? But maybe you stretch it out. Maybe you've got a little bit bigger balance, and you're just covering you on health insurance, averaging 5% a year. You know, you could kind of stagger that. Maybe you go on a spouse's plan, and they're working, and you just piddle that out in a short period of time. It's, it's kind of up to you, but it's... What I guess I learned from the folks that helped us set it up is it's short spend money. It's money that's in there to get out. You know, you want to spend it. It's not invested necessarily aggressively like your overall long-term investments would be. It's intended to be quick spend money. So it's kind of up to you. All right, Social Security impact. I've had that question before too. And some people, if you if you know anything about flexible spending, you know that pre-taxing your flex money sometimes over a long period of time can it affect your overall Social Security payout in the long run? It's minimal, but it happens. But on the flip side of that, this VIVA payout is a tax-free portion on your last check of your last day of a career of earnings that is negligible impact on Social Security. It's, you'd have to have pushing a $125,000 VIVA payout to even slightly affect a VIVA. And I think my record VIVA is $82,000. So, you know, we have limits on how much leave we can carry. We don't have limits on our hourly salary. So some people that make higher amounts and have big wads of leave end up with those bigger accounts. But don't sweat the impact on Social Security. Okay, this is where I'm going to tie back all the stuff we've talked about about groups. So the little org chart, the one I have here that Sheila gave me of you guys, the one that I had in the corner, remember <coughs> you've got minimum of five people. It can be union. It can be non-union, or you can blend it. If you want the union people standing on their own, they can do that. They certainly can, but you can blend it up. Existing group boundaries, okay? We can't set up a group here. Uh, boy, this is small. Uh, let's say meat, poultry, inspection. Let's say that one person from brands wants to be in this group. They can't, okay? If we had all of brands and all of meat, poultry, inspection and two, two bureaus together, we could do that, but we can't just pick and choose. 
So all or none done the decision process of the ballot, I already told you that. But here's the part about look at it annually, okay? For just two seconds, let's pretend we're all in one group, okay? And Sheila decides to retire this summer, okay? And we put the VEBA together for her because she wants her sick leave in VEBA. Great. Do it. She retires. Then next year we get around the table and it's our turn to vote and it's your turn to retire. And you come to the table and say, you know, gang, I've looked at this and I really think I want sick and annual in the VEBA. And maybe he does bring the good cookies and donuts to the meeting. I'm kidding. But we all say, sure, if that's what you want this year, that's what we'll do. On the flip side, maybe when you come to the table the following year, the people that wanted VEBA in the first place have retired. And you're all looking at each other going, gee, it's going to be a while. So you just vote it away. You just get rid of it. Okay? You can do that. It's kind of a, every year I always say you have the opportunity to keep it, drop it, or change it. And changing it might be from sick to sick and annual. Changing it might be group structure. Maybe you've got this bureau over here that dropped below five members and they need to buddy up with another bureau. You could change it, okay? Or you could disband it. Or if everybody's happy, just keep rolling. So every year you put eyes on it to say keep it, drop it, or change it. Because two things can happen. If you're an eligible to retire group and Sheila retires and they replace her position with somebody who's eligible to retire, they come into that job and they've got VEBA. They never voted with, it, with you on the rest of it. Let's say I, I'm already there, but let's say I became eligible to retire because I hit my 50th birthday or my fifth year of service. I rolled into your group mid-year. Next November, I turn the magic age and, oh, I'm in VEBA. That's why we give you every year an opportunity to keep it, drop it, or change it because of those people that may come eligible during the year that didn't get to vote with you in the beginning. Now they get to lay eyes on it and have an opinion about what's going forward. Okay, so that's important thoughts to have as well. All right, I already told you that you have to agree on what's going in it before you vote. So you've got to have that sick leave or sick and annual leave discussion before you go to Sheila and say, get me a ballot. Okay, she's got to know what to put on it. So you guys kind of have to talk that out. PRS, highest average calculation discussion. What's that? Okay, that's going to be next. That's where I'm hoping the coffee or the pop or whatever has stuck with you because it's a little bit thick, but we're going to go there. <coughs> now, when I talk about PERS eligibility or being an eligible to retire group, remember the picture with the blue people? Sheila gets from me every month a list of eligible to retire employees of livestock. And she looks at that list and goes, oh, geez, Bob had a birthday. Bob's in the group now. Sends him a letter. Welcome to the club. That list is generated from PERS based on your just being vested. In other words, any age of 25 years age 50 and 5, or your full retirement criteria, okay? And PERS generates the list because Sheila doesn't know if you worked in the city of Glendive water treatment office for two years after college. She doesn't have that necessarily background. PERS does, so they keep all of that together and track it all. They know if you've been hired since July of 11 or before that, and that's the criteria that you have to meet depending on your hire date, okay? So that list decides who's eligible to retire and therefore the construction of the group. It also, oops, let me back up. It also decides what your factor is going to be when they do the calculation of PERS. If you're just vested, it's a little lower calculator than if you're fully eligible to retire. Let me show you where that fits. Okay, so when you get ready to retire, one of your homework examples is to go to Armando or Cherry or Joel at PERS and say, hey, Calculate what my paycheck is going to be in retirement. You'd be shocked how many people retire and have no idea what that paycheck is going to look like. I don't know how they do that. I can't fly by the seat of my pants quite that low. But Armando has stood in front of groups and said, if you aren't asking, you're not planning. Okay? So you go to PERS and you say, hey, what's my benefit going to be? And they say, well, they're going to look at your years of service times your highest 36 times the factor. That factor, remember, is vested or fully eligible to retire, okay? Then they come up with your monthly benefit, okay? So that's how they do it. Now, the thing is, if you're in VEBA, that sick and annual leave cannot go into that calculation at PERS. We can't double dip. So it's for you, we have to figure out, is the sick and annual leave tax-free payout a better deal for you, or is it a better deal to have that sick and annual in your calculation some here that boosts your check? Don't know. I can tell you that in about 80% of the time, 80% of the cases, the tax-free break on the VEBA is better. But again, there's that 20% that you've got to figure out if you're one of them. 
So I have four examples, because if I had any more than that, you'd slide up your chair and probably send me out the door. So this is somebody who's retiring at the end of a year. And when I made this example up back in 2011, that was when three pay period months fell in June, July, or December, January. Guess what? We're in a three pay period month now. It's March. <laughs> Messes up my example big time. But if you separated a month in which you have a high pay period month, that helps your GABA adjustment and a few things with PERS in upcoming years. But you can walk that through with Joel and Armando and Terry and all the other people at PERS to figure out where your sweet spot is for picking that date. Because three pay period months isn't a, a no-go, you know, a pull the plug sort of date. It's just helpful. So this example assumes somebody's leaving then, okay? Because when it goes through that little calculator, it looks a little bit better. So that's our first example. Three or 36 months of salary there, okay? Between the red arrows. Second example is somebody with about $8,000 worth of leave, okay? And they are trying to decide, hmm, do I want my leave in this or do I want my leave in Viva? So they go to PERS, and PERS cannot just slap it in that chart because, shoot, that's higher than a pay per month. They have to make it look like salary. So that 8200 bucks becomes January, February, and part of March. Well, they fill out of the high pay period bug, and when this goes through the calculator, it's actually less per month than our guy that retired in December. Okay, so that's one thought. Third example is somebody with almost 20 grand in leave, vacation and sick together. <coughs> they put that in the chart, and what it does for them is it gives them five and a half months of this salary in December, November, and it carves off five and a half months of lower salary that they don't have to consider in that formula. And it actually boosts their monthly paycheck from PERS by a whole $2. Okay. <laughs> If it would have stuck them into another high pay period month, it might have been about 40 bucks a month until you die. So then you weigh, hmm, 40 bucks a month till I die versus tax savings on 20 grand. I mean, again, a homework assignment for you, not my call. And then the last <coughs> example I'm going to throw out to you is you've got sick leave in Viva, but you've got $12,000 of vacation leave sitting there. And you give it to PERS to put in the calculator, and they put it in, and it puts you in a high pay period month. It's October, you've had it, you're sick of it, you want out of here, you could. Because your annual leave is going to push you into a high pay period month for the purposes of that example. Okay? Again, these are four. There's probably ten more. And in, in the thought of just having you stick with me, I'll just summarize these four and say, the red arrow guy, when it goes through the calculator, it gives them $34.88 a month. The $8,200 person, they, this amount is actually 21 bucks a month less. And they would have been way better off with the tax break on the 8200 okay? you meaning when you say In that, Viva. going Viva. Yep. Okay. And our $20,000 guy, I mean, if two months a month is more too good for you, in your paycheck till you die, great. But I'm guessing that 18000 guy would have been better off. Now, again, if that would have been twenty or 22000 it might have meant a little more every month in that paycheck. Again, you have to weigh it out. And then my last example is that best of both worlds thing. So this is the kind of homework you got to do when it's annual vote time and it's coming up on your year, and you're thinking, hmm, wonder what one fits for me, okay? You can call these guys. I leave numbers and emails there for you. You can just jot out a name. They're all in Outlook. But if you're five years away from retirement and just want to play with it, mpara.mt.gov has a really cool little calculator out there, and you can take, what is it, next Wednesday's, Wednesday's pay stubs, Look at your current balance of sick and annual, and then it'll ask you a date you think you're going to retire, and it'll calculate out some things. Then you can take your leave out and calculate it again. If these guys do it, you get these real pretty printouts, okay? <laughs> you got these planning documents to use, but it takes them some time too. And if you ask them two weeks before the end of the year, good luck with that, okay? You've got to be thinking ahead. <laughs> You've got to be getting these documents so that you've got to make some plans instead of two weeks before your last day of work. So be thinking on that. So they will play that game mm -hmm. with the annual leave mm -hmm. and that as you're coming up on that going, I'm probably going to have blah, blah, mm -hmm. and they'll start tweeting. Because they'll take your years of service them. times your pay stub last time plus the date you think you're going to go, and they know <coughs> how you're earning it. That yeah, and I mean, the that payroll, out. that's fine, but the, but the tossing in what you have for your balance is... Um, what I'm saying is the one that has that 
yes, payroll has it too, but Empera knows that. Empera is going to be the ones that are going to massage that, through, that through, and through play it. Okay. And you can go to them and say, do it with my sick and leave annual in, do it with just my sick in, or do it without both of them. Because you have to have sick leave and leave. So it's either going to be annual leave over here, sick and annual leave, or nothing. Okay, so you've got three examples you can have them run, and they're, they do it all the time. When you separate or retire, turn in your form, money transfers, the folks that are going to take you from there are A.W. Rain and Associates in Spokane. They've had the VEBA since the inception. They won the bid the second time. We go out to bid this year. Hopefully win it again. Okay. So they take care of your claims and premiums payments. They tell you what's an eligible expense. Looking through that list, maybe there's something on there you're wondering will it count. They'll help you make your investment changes, but every single one of those things can be done on their website. So you can get help on the phone, or you can do it yourself, but they're pretty self-service. They're an awesome, awesome bunch of people, and they take good care of us. So this group is truly in the next steps phase. Sometimes I'm standing in front of you just because it's annual vote time, or you, you're you already very well aware of what you want to do, and don't need anybody to tell you, but you got Excuse me, I can think of so you guys are kind of in that place of what are we going to do next? And you got to look at the plan information. You can go out to the Viva website, a little light bedtime reading. Okay, <laughs> can't read, can't sleep tonight. I'm guaranteeing I'll have you out in five minutes. This website has the Viva statute over there on the About tab, way up in the corner. You can read statute, you can read rules, you can read code. You know, whatever you, you want to do. All the forms are out there. There's kind of a how to vote document. There's what's a group. There's all sorts of, again, fun reading material. Fun for the person that thinks that's fun, I guess. Then talk to PERS about highest average calculation, if that's you, in the next 6 to 18. Think about that. That would be homework. And then for crying out loud, participate in the vote. When you get a ballot, and Sheila and I get calls about, well, I don't like what happened with FIBA. Well, did you vote? Well, no. Okay. I, you know, it's kind of like the president. Don't be griping about, you know, what you got. Of course, this year, that's a really bad example. All right. So. Summary today is the money goes in tax-free, it earns tax-free, and when you start spending it on the other side, it's still tax-free. Okay? What did I bring up for questions? Let's do that awful fast. Yes. So if, um, so the IRS requires a vote, which mm -hmm. is ludicrous in my opinion because it's an individual decision, it's our lives. Why do we have to True have state. other people decide what's going to happen in our life? Nonetheless, that's a good old government for you. Yep. But if you aren't happy with the all of your vote, and you qualify to be in another group, can you vote more than once a year? Can you form another, or if you form one group, you got to wait another year? Mm -hmm. You're stuck with that one. So, for an example, and I don't know, <coughs> excuse me, I don't know where you as an individual can't, like, divorce okay. that group and go, okay, this this group. That's individual choice. Thing. And then is this VEBA selection, just building on what George said, is that just a, you know, kind of like when we're in the eligibility month for you know, redoing our benefits, you, you only got one time a year that, that And it's based on, on the payroll cycle. Not. It's not a calendar year. So okay. if we voted next Friday is the end of the payroll cycle, the 17th of March, so your VEBA year would be 318-17 to 316-18. of 18. Okay. So you'd be but, in it for that But year. you as an individual member of that group can't jump ship at any point. You're nope. stuck until March, even if you go to a different agency. Well, if you go to a different agency, then you're a part of what they're a part of. Okay, okay. You, it's position tie. Okay. It's this little square okay, tie. Gotcha. If you jump out of this square and land over DPHHS and they happen to have a group that you fell into, great. Well, that's that's your money for that year. If you're not happy with the result of those, there's no money. If you go from here to DPHHS, the leave balance is good. No, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about that this group voted uh -huh. different than what I wanted to vote. Okay. Say I wanted to be at FIBA, and they said no. Okay. Okay, and I retired them off. Yep. Tax catch. They're going to, they're going to, I, don't, I can't a year later yeah. vote because my, my money's spent or it's been, it's been cashed out. See what I mean? What no, happens to my money during that period of time? Nothing. You're still working. No, if you're not working, if you quit and you retire. Oh, I see. And you've left and you've been passed. And you weren't out. happy with what happened. Yeah, you you get done. what you get. You get a lump sum check. You get your lump sum check and your last you check. You can't, can't fix it with another vote a year from No, now. because once you leave, you're, you're never part you're of this again. Yeah. So, Melanie, how does that work if somebody in that situation <coughs> has set up a health savings account at the credit union? Yeah. As far as getting 
their payout to be less tax or pre-tax or how does, how does that work? Credit union HSAs, I don't have the scoop on that as far as I don't believe you can fund an HSA, a health savings account, an individual account with employer dollars. Okay. You may put it in deferred comp tax-free, uh -huh. tax when it comes out. You may prepay to the end of the year in which you retire with some leave balances. That's one option, but it's just that amount of leave and it's just a year. So you're going to pay taxes and then you're going to go to credit union and make a deposit. Right. Yeah. yeah. That would be that example on an HSA. Uh -huh. Okay. I have a question for like an agency that has plenty of people because mm -hmm. it's five minimum groups. Right. Do they have the ability to make three groups, all of each choice? Non viva. And then you pick which group to be in. And then you pick. I'd love it, but no. Just, I mean, that would be. I mean, they'd be almost choice. like running groups because each eligible person to retire, but that's not yeah. out there. So you got about three groups. Uh, I'm sorry. But you, you got about three groups you can pick from. If you're an administrator, you can pick with the administrator. If you're eligible to retire, you can pick with the eligible to retire. If you're an administrator and you're in the accounting section, you got the accounting section. Only if they're so what set you got to do is only if you're in management. Only if they're set up that way. Right. Because yeah. really the person under you doesn't have that choice. But you as a manager do. Mm -hmm. So if, you know, he's throwing out this option, you know, George is up here and he's administrator over these, you know, five bureaus, and by chance there's an administrator in the bureau chief's group, which is a tough one because that's sort of edging on highly compensated, but we've done it. Or George happens to be up here and this is the only bureau that has a VIVA he can choose to be in that VIVA. Mm -hmm. So and, and we just can't be a totally broad department of livestock. We've got to be Well you can, but can you imagine the conversations to get everybody agree to have department of livestock eligible We've got several groups already. Yeah. You know, yeah, there are several, are several groups. Yeah. But we just don't have so you could do so an entire you know division. Guys have a yeah, absolutely. Yeah. When they so attach two agencies, yeah. then you've got in terms so of when you know that retirement yeah. eligible, we know that when they get yeah. the information to vote. That so this is a group that they join that, that they're in. Go into. Yeah, like we have a lot of further retired on that. Just doing this, our latest one is the Eastern yeah, no, Market Supervisor. Not eligible to retire in the whole. You don't have a group. You all don't have a group to do it. And we can't. I took the lab and all of a sudden. You send the lab and I get my yellow tire for up. So then, yeah, so like all of us, and you're working with lab and you become a tire. Then you have the information. You're in that group. That's another three people. Right. So now. Right after that. Right after that. I think there's a But again, that's not a huge question. Because he can
go yeah. there and keep showing you break a brick. Well, well so much so that interest rate. Does anybody else have anything? I'm sort of ignoring my people on the phone, but George and I were having a little chat there. So, anybody else on the phone have questions? I know we lost a few. But. So, um, and and so just to be really clear, because of the way that the work groups are structured, so and she could have a grant. How the office eligible to retire? Right, because Darcy can't logically join anybody else. No, she doesn't. She's not a district person. She's not a market supervisor. With you and Helena Brand's office eligible. I mean, and we are just barely. I mean, we're like nine people total. Yeah, but you could do in any separation group, and all of you be in it. Right. Yeah, but I mean, that's the only way to make that work. Yeah. yeah. See, that's right. the only way that makes sense is in any separation group. But then in any okay. separation group, okay. sometimes rubs a little bit against the grain because yeah. you get some 30-year-old person who gets their next career ladder job yeah. out of state. Yeah. And leaves and poof, they've got this little Viva and they're like, oh, yeah. $42.85. Yeah. In, in I mean, I'm kidding. I mean, yeah, you can spend it and you get it yeah. tax free, but sometimes yeah. that's the right. But, but yeah. just to expand this conversation for a minute, if you'll indulge me, let's just say right now, if, if Darcy were looking at leaving within you know, the near future mm -hmm. and we form a group, um, whether our newbies, you know, really are the interest of, but, you know, in kind of solidarity. You don't have enough eligible to retire, so you have but, everybody. But, so we do an everybody group, mm -hmm. and we do that. Next year, you know, if they haven't gone found jobs somewhere else, they can either vote to disband the group mm -hmm. if they want. Right. I, I mean, you know, it's right, just like get on the bus for the year it. to help somebody out. Right. Yeah. yeah. Because once they're out, they don't care what you do. Yeah, that I mean, because that's just the thing is then, then the next, Two that are going to be eligible. I mean, we've got to ride for a while. Oh, yeah, you can beg so how does the 25 percent work? Meaning the 25 percent of a group, if they want to have a vote, how does that? You know, that's been a guideline that was established for us way back in the day. And I mean, when you get a six-person group, that's a person in a lake. You know, yeah. I mean, it's <laughs> like if somebody expresses interest, we go right, for it. Right, and that's that's what we've been doing. But yeah. but the reality is, it says 25 percent. So right. if somebody so if you get a 40-person group and you need the 25%, you can poll, you can get interest that way. You know, there's ways. But it doesn't harm those participants in any way. Yeah. And, and, and they even weren't expecting it. But if they're leaving in that first year, they don't have enough for a payout anyway. I mean, I'm sorry. No, no, I mean, it'll it'll still be it's, not year, it's not in their first year here. It's in the, it's the yeah. year that the group exists. Yeah, that right, is. right. But you know what I'm saying? Thing is, well, I mean, to counter you, and I mean, I'm the queen of devil's no, advocate. Do I have sat with HR people with $12 an hour employees who found out they were in Aviva in tears because that payout, even taxed, was going to pay the U-Haul to move them from point A to point B. Right. It, and it, they it, don't have that right, money. Right. So yeah. it happens, you know, that you've got somebody who's going, geez, I didn't yeah, really plan. Yeah. But so if you get an in-career employee who's got a huge tax savings to gain by having a Viva, there may be tears on his side trying to get yeah, that. Exactly, you exactly. Know. exactly. And so the other option would be eligible to retire at the Helena, mm -hmm. not, not all the across the state. Because we can do regions. So We've done regions before. Ev, so George, me, whoever. Yeah, I mean that kind of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. It doesn't have to be within your work mm -hmm. unit or division. Could maybe expand it. I'm just throwing out an idea. Mm -hmm. I mean, central office as opposed to I mean, the entire annually it would probably be. I mean, people. We're well, talking. People that look at it annually. Yeah, people yeah. that are I mean, that need to look into it. Yeah, just, just by saying. I mean, what we know, and even though you know, just veering off in the weeds a little bit here, but you know, we're saying there's like Evelyn, there's you, there's Darcy, there's Martha, there's enough people at Helena headquarters, right. Department of Livestock. Yeah. Probably. You know, that if we could do that, I mean, not, you know, but eligible, and it, it, is it eligible and early eligible? Are they if you're vested, if you're 50 in five years, yeah. mm -hmm. your belly button's on the group. So I can join the group. Mm -hmm. right. okay. I also want to be like thinking the people that you're talking about. But I mean, I mean, there's only so much that you're making choices is whether we got annual leave in or out. I mean, it's, I mean, come on, there's really not that many choices. And we don't designate the big questions I think that we were having is, 
nobody, you know, if I want to be Vanguard and everybody else wants to be, Mar it, it doesn't even matter. No, that's no. Individual, individual, and that's what I didn't understand. So you go, you know, at that point, yeah, none of that matters because all that's a personal choice. So it's just but you're voting it whether it's 100 percent vacation and 25 percent sick leave as a group. You're voting. I mean, that's really the that's the only yeah. right. variables right mm -hmm. there. And if you're, uh, you know, headed out the door, most of us are going to go. We're trying to save taxes, right? Yeah. I mean, so most yeah. people are save you bringing do that little that. example with PRS and, and, where and the annual leave benefits yeah. are better there. And so play that game before everybody decides to get together. And if it makes sense. You know, for the majority that are going out the door this year, you know, unless it's absolutely torn one way or the other, let's get on the Happy Town bus for the people that are going to benefit the most. Every year you're going to tell you how other areas are doing it. With the yeah. Group. Yeah. That's I mean, what they did. They they didn't want it, but one person did. Mm -hmm. And so so. And they'll probably disband this year. They probably I guess. Will. And accounting used to have one, and and they decided against it, so they just disbanded it. Well, well I, know. I mean, it's it's. You know, it happens. Yeah. <laughs> it I mean, because I'm accountable belly button. I say it's going to be far more beneficial if we can play a game of solidarity here right. and include Absolutely. everybody who's eligible um, for the group, you know, at, at headquarters here, regardless of what division we're in. And then. That, that's the group that votes. And, and then, you know, whatever's yeah. going to be best. I mean, not I'm not that. going out the door, but I'm eligible. And you go, I'm going to vote with best for, you know, whomever is in there. I mean, unless, you know, the, the two or three people that are going out, y'all have different recipes. But we have that conversation before we're already locked in. And that's Politics. exactly what other agencies do, some of the huge ones. Right before voting time. Politics. The, yeah, <laughs> donuts. Info is put yeah. out there for anybody <coughs> eligible or interested. They get a meeting. They get all the people how they want to vote. They kind of pull, like you said, get an idea. Do we need one group? Do we need two? Mm -hmm. And, and yeah, because like and here and for and children, we, now, we have to decide. No, no control. They're physically in a different building, but they're in Helena. Yeah. But I happen to know that they're not interested in doing it. Mm -hmm. But they, I mean. And that's the personality in the group that's caused that. That person leaves, and milk may ultimately right, right, right. So there might be some variation. Interested in, in these, these so yeah. So you got your set. You've got your. Just to be clear here, from what Laura was saying, the eligible retired can be part of the central office. It doesn't have to be the entire. Yeah, department. considering that we're headquarters. Centralized Services yeah. Division oh. could be a division, which right. would include milk control and include George Edwards. Uh -huh. Brands could be a yep. division, but you don't have enough, so you well, might. Well, we do, but uh, we'd have to be all inclusive. I mean, right now, just. Or we could have the whole central office in Helena as a group, right, Sheila? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you got three or four groups. And, and I mean, honestly, I'm thinking about those two buildings. I think that that's overthinking. We paid power bill on them. It's because we don't have yeah. desk space. Up I here. don't know. And, and the headquarters. Yeah, I mean, for heaven's sake. Really. So she'd be the one that would say, you know. She'll almost send me an org chart and say, it looks yeah. like these guys. Yeah. And then you and I sit down and we highlight who's eligible to retire based on the most current list. Yeah. And then we go from there. Yeah. 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 I mean, I'm just saying, together. Pink House and, and the Yellow House. I mean, they're still part of Helen headquarters. They're right. just not housed it's about hard. In, under yeah. this roof right. because we don't have enough office space. Mm -hmm. They're yeah. still, you know, we still they're still Helen headquarters. Right. Right. Is my yeah. feeling. I, I don't but we can. I can argue. But it also would be an guys. opportunity if they wanted to break off and be their own group that they sure could. they could justify it. Right. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <coughs> well, no, they need a little time, you know. To figure out what, and to play that game with Armando to, to go, am I going to, where's my tipping point on this? And everybody needs to know their their own stuff. Well, what I'll do is I'll send out an email with a response request that says, are you interested in getting into a group? And from that interest, then we'll start looking at how we can slice and dice and make a right. But I need to know, you know, who's interested. Where's the interest pocket? Because yeah. we're going to have somebody that's looking at it this summer. <coughs> yeah. yeah. Year so that's going to drop. August it. to September, and if we've got at least three or four that are going. And yeah, I'm going to want excuse people myself because I've got to run. But okay, okay. So you guys have people. questions. Don't hesitate. Okay. Thank, thank you so much. Hey. Thank, thank you. Much. Thank you. Yeah. So if we get the interest, then we can say, okay, this is to retire or all or and whatever. Because I know, I know that George Edwards is not. Interested I mean, I wouldn't want to vote not, not, not interested. But I have five years away. I would. Yeah. 
12 months out. I was before. not interested until I went to this presentation. I wish she was handing out a PowerPoint because... She is. It's recorded. It'll be on the Okay. Um, because that explains in a nutshell, and then I can turn around and retell. We could probably. Is, well, anybody, on the line? is anybody out there on the phone? Is that you, Cindy? Mm -hmm. Okay. We can barely hear what you said. Did you have did you did you have a question or anything? No, I'm ready to get off. I just was listening to you guys. Okay. She's in the Billings area. Right. Eligible to retire group. So are the labs? So I don't know if there's five of them. Yeah, Cindy, this is Laura. How about um, Sheila's going to send out information to all of us and like what would be your possibility of a group that you could participate in? The Billings already has mm -hmm. eligible and, to retire. Yeah. Okay. But I don't know how many people are left now that Monty left and Monty Yeah, left. I was going to say, I, I remember voting when Johnny Lane was. Mm -hmm. Johnny Lane. Yeah. yeah. But so anyway, you'd be sending out to those who are eligible to retire. That's who you're sending this out to. You're, you're, I'll you're, send it out to everybody. Whether they're eligible or not. Right. Because I'll send it out to everybody. And, and who, it matters if you walk out the door. If you quit, you have the option. You don't have to retire. Right. No, yeah. So are you interested in investigating a group? Because some people may be planning to leave. And they, you know, we don't know. Still, might not want that track. We might have to help for eight years to right. make right. 56 things. Well, the nice I mean, the difference yeah. for us was in the thousands. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, and we're not using it. It's sitting there. And that was one of my questions was, is there a time limit? And she but clarified she that. No. no. There's and no the time. And it is. And one thing that Ev, you know, misunderstood, and I don't, she said somebody told her this, it does pass on when you pass. It does go to your beneficiary yes. or yes, yeah, I wasn't sure on so, that. So yeah, so it doesn't. It, yeah. So we're just sitting on it till somebody. I'm done. I think actually the credit unit told her that because they were pushing yeah. that. Yeah. So he's in the, he's got him. Yeah. Yeah. Sure seems like a no-brainer. So yeah. yeah, Cindy. So Sheila's going to send out that stuff um, again and see how many are like like in the different buckets that exist. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay, bye bye. Yeah, so the billings eligible to retire with them, uh, they've had their group for quite a while. But it's now, and that's what I need to find out is that when is she going to yeah. resolve it or is it, does it get resolved? Who should we call? So. Okay. Good. Very good. Well, yeah. I mean, I mean, I was dead set against it because I was just. And like, I didn't. Meh, 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 meh. Yeah. yeah I think like because that. I guarantee my husband. And so the value of that. Fill that out, right? You're gonna state that in the yeah, I'll be <laughs> checking on that. Yeah. Whoever needs help. Well, so, see, so that's the first. And if we don't okay. have okay. enough okay. people in like to open it to retirement sure eligible and not. Person. I mean, there are Jesus certain Jesus people that are willing to be like, team players and jump you know on board to, to, to get a big enough so I need group. To I mean, if we had to be, him to for example, us down in brand, that it can all be done on their there's website. still, I mean, age-wise, in five years, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, um, I don't think we have five. So we'd have to help it's, out it's, it's Tammy, you, me, Martha. Is that five? No. It's four. Yeah. I mean, I mean, whatever you want. Yeah. I mean, because. Yeah. I mean, because. Yeah. I mean, because. I mean, because. Yeah. I mean, because. Yeah. I mean, Yeah. Well, it's good to do the whole thing. We have plenty. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because we just don't have enough on the floor. Yeah. You know, people now have to realize that the group thing isn't as easy as you think. 14? 50? Callie. Well, but Callie isn't 50. It's 50 and 5. But Callie and I are both 15 years. Yeah, and Callie will be 40 this year in December. So, I mean, you know, it's either all eligible or else it's it's Tammy, me, you, Martha, four of us. I was just talking to, to Melanie with, when all the jabbering was going on. I go, who wouldn't be for this? And she gave one or two examples. She says, but if you're really going to go buy a boat and you're going to get whacked 5000 bucks on your taxes, why not go to the credit union? Your, your interest on that boat's going to be a lot less than 5000 But there are people that feel very strongly. Like, I mean, I mean the example of well, somebody, really and, and I think I was big, oh, heck no, because it. I didn't for understand For whatever it. I care yeah. about that penalty. That. No, it was loss. yeah. Cash is cash, and it's a loss. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. and and so when you package it, that it is really. I mean, you know, you can either throw away four months of premium, 
Well, and a lot of people that have, the other thing is, a lot of people, and we're getting away from this, but a lot of people that have had this huge comp time, that they know they're getting the cash yeah, from. Yeah, and then they those are the ones that wanted to be that straight too. Because they knew they were getting the cost of the company go into it. There's no option for that. that. So they knew they were going to have this cash to buy. But in. now we don't have That's a lot of those people are. Right, people right. Are right. Hired and probably them. never should have carried. Yeah, no, I mean, because, yeah, um, bomb regulations, you know, they're carrying that much. But. But yeah, and the, I mean, you know, so there is a cap on your leave balances, but not on your sick leave. But it kind of undercuts it by the 25% rule. Yeah. But which people sometimes, you know, don't understand. Yeah. Not but that but again, balance. still, I mean, even if you just just for the sake of going, I have 400 hours in my sick leave. So that means I I only have 100 that I can free up. Right. And I get paid 20 bucks an hour. That's 2,000 bucks. It's either 2,000 in VBA or about 1,400. And they can, put that they can put their payout in different costs, though, too. But yeah. that's the other thing, mm -hmm. as people do. Yeah. So, you know, it's just you. You know, your your how you want to go. Yeah, your perspective changes as you age, as we all know. <laughs> yeah. 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 I and just I thought that it was a lot more constraining, and then once you were there, you were locked in, and. Um, but if you're voting, and I mean, you can vote to disband too. I think that's the good that you know there's always that safety hatch. If next year, you know, right. and the people, I mean, I'll just give you what I hear. If people just get afraid that then the next year other people are going to keep it, and so then they're still stuck with it. So you mm -hmm. just, I mean, you don't want to be part of a group until you know you're ready to to deal to, you know, right? Well, I mean, there is the chance. Okay, let's right. join the group to help so and so and so and so, right. but. Then who's going to be the one to determine whether that group right. can be disbanded? Maybe you're the only one that wants out. Right. You know? That's what right. I'm saying. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. That's, that's what I'm saying. But but as far as you know, if we're retirement eligible, you know, I mean, very quickly, you know, just out of the four on our floor, you know, and if it's retirement eligible, those people are going boom, 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 really fast, and yeah. you know, if you disband in the next year or two, it's crazy. You know, I mean. Yeah. It does require some education yeah. and thought. Yeah. Well, I'm willing to do whatever anybody wants, but yeah. I'm not as anti it as and I thought that yeah. I was, so <laughs> that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. It's still a we lot. We shut of, this off. It's still a lot of thinking. I, it's probably the red. That's